Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for Accounting for Leases Discussions, Part 2. If you haven't already done so, please read pages 866 through 873 and complete the related Learn Smarts in your textbook before following along with this handout. So in Part 1, we talked about the differences between operating and capital leases. And in part two, I'm going to demonstrate for you how the accounting varies. I first want to start by practicing the math of leases. This will be familiar with, to you because we've done it before. We did it in the debt chapters, and we did it in the bonds chapter. So we did it in chapter five as well. I'm going to assume that we're going to lease a piece of equipment worth $15,000. And I'm going to use many examples throughout this handout using the same illustration so you can focus on what the different lease characteristics do to a lease. I find if you use one amount and change it for a different lease characteristic, it's easier to follow than if you're using different amounts while you're doing different characteristics. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is have you calculate how much the payment would be, whether it were capital or operating. If you had a $15,000 piece of equipment and you were thinking about renting it to one or more people, doesn't matter at this point. You might have the same piece of equipment you rent to three different people one year each or one person for three years. And it's going to have a 10% capital interest rate with it and the first payment is going to be due at the signing of the lease so 10 years or three years 10 percent first payment due at the signing making it an annuity due and i want to point out to you that nearly all leases are annuity dues now if you recall from chapter five if you know the present value for the fifteen thousand dollars all you need to do is divide that by a present value interest factor from a present value annuity due chart with a certain number of N's and a certain I. In this case, it's three, and the I is 10%. Or perhaps you're using your calculator. You can enter $15,000 as the present value. The number of years is three. The interest rate is 10, and solve for the payment amount. So however you choose to do this, go ahead and calculate what the payment on this piece of equipment would be. Let's start there. If you're using the chart, you'll notice that the interest factor from table 6 is 2.7355. Divide 15,000 by that, and you'll come up with a payment of 54.83. So that would be the payment amount to recover a $15,000 investment over three years, 10% with payments collected at the end. Now, just to say we know how to do this, let's make an amortization schedule. Go ahead and assume that you're going to do this on the first day, of course, of January 2014. What would your amortization schedule for an annuity do where the present value starts at $15,000 with $5,483 payments? Go ahead and fill out the amortization schedule, remembering your first payments made at the beginning. A quick little time chart of that is you have three payments made, and the first one's due on the day of the signing. The second one's due a year later, and the third one's due at the beginning of the third year. So go ahead and calculate an amortization schedule for me that shows what that would look like. Then come back and show me how you did. Hopefully, whoa, I have too much stuff, huh? Hopefully, your amortization schedule looks something like this.
welcome back. Hopefully your amortization schedule looks something like this. On the first day of 2014, you rent a piece of equipment and make a payment on it. Since you get the equipment and make your payment on the very first day, it's an annuity due, there is no interest and the entire payment goes to principal. 15,000 minus 5483 is your loan balance after that first payment is made on day one. At the end of the year, another payment will be made, or the first day of the next year. I just use the end of the year as a matter of convenience. It's one day off. Interest will be 10% of 950, 9,517, so it's 952. The principal payment tomorrow will be 4531, the difference. And the loan balance will be 9517 minus 4531 for 4986. The end of this year, another payment will be made for 5483. Interest will be 10% of 497. The balance will go towards principal and it will be paid off. And notice I have a little rounding error. It's not 498, it's 497 to make the lease come out to zero. So that would be an amortization schedule that would pay a $15,000 piece of equipment off over three years using a 10% interest rate with payments made at the beginning. Let's look now at how the accounting would go for year one for the lessee. So accounting entries for the lessee for the first year are going to be demonstrated here, assuming it's an operating lease first. Now, it would probably only be a one-year lease, because remember, title isn't transferring, and you're not meeting any of those four tests. And when you write the check, it would be written to expense and cash. And that would be how the accounting would be done for the lessee for the first year if it were an operating lease. Let's contrast that to how it would be if it's still for the lessee, but it's not an operating lease. It's a capital lease. Let's say you're going to hold the equipment for all three years, and that's its useful life. And you're paying for the equipment, so it clearly meets a capital lease requirement, you would pick up the leased equipment, you would set up the lease liability, and record the first payment. This could be done in two entries if you wanted. I did it in one, and it incorporates this first payment being made. At the end of the first year, the lessee would depreciate the equipment by saying depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation recognizing that they truly own the equipment. And also, as an adjusting entry on the first day, you would record the interest. Because remember, the payment was made on the first day, and so you have a whole year's worth of interest to accrue and to interest payable. Since it's an annuity due, the payment will be made tomorrow. And you'll debit interest payable for the 952 and credit lease li debit lease liability for the principal portion of it and credit cash, but we were just doing that first entry. So you can see then how the accounting would go for the leasee for the first year. If it's an operating lease, they truly just show rent expense and that they don't own the equipment or have a liability. If it's a true capital lease, they show that they own the equipment they depreciate it, and they show interest expense on it for the first year as well. Now let's, using that same amortization schedule and same amounts, look at the accounting for the lessor. For as long as I can, I'm going to keep both the lessee and the lessor as first year entries on the screen so you can compare them. So now let's look at the lessor. The lessor, if it's an operating lease, will have entries that mirror what the lessee did, except instead of paying cash,
they're receiving cash and instead of having rent expense, they're picking up rent revenue for 5483. So there's symmetry, it's the other side of it. And remember the lessee owns the equipment. If it's a capital lease, and so they'll depreciate it as well. So they'll pick up the rent revenue and they'll get to maintain the depreciation. If it's a capital lease and it's a lessor, they're going to go out and they're going to purchase this piece of equipment for the lessee to lease to them. And right now we're not doing a sales type lease, we're doing a direct financing. That will make more sense down the road a little bit. So the lessor will go out and purchase this inventory and turn around and lease it to the lessee. So they pick up the inventory and then they turn around and lease it. They pick up the first payment. They set up the receivable and they take it off their books. In a sales type lease, they don't go out and buy the inventory for the lessee, or they don't make it, they go out and buy it. They're not selling it to them, they're simply, I'm going to use a term here, carrying the paper, financing it. If a credit union finances a car for you and you choose to lease it, the credit union doesn't make the car, they go out and buy the car for you and then lease it to you. So that's what that first entry is about. I'm going to drop down now so you can see if you're the lesser at the end of the first year, you also have an adjusting entry where you need to pick up the interest that you've earned on that lease receivable throughout the year. And it mirrors exactly what the lessee did, except it's the other side of the transaction. So if it's a capital lease, the lessee owns it and depreciates it, the lessor doesn't. But if it's an operating lease, the lessor maintains ownership and they depreciate it. The lessee, that's hard to say, isn't it? Simply rents the equipment for a period of time. So that gives you a chance to review the map and to see how the entries compare for capital leases and operating leases from the lessee's perspective and the lessor's perspective. Thanks for joining me and we'll talk to you soon in part three.